Hi everyone, welcome to week three. Week three we're going to do more of application with supply and demand. And we're trying to focus on, rather than the shifts, what happens to equilibrium price and quantity, but rather what are the implications of those price changes. Now for this week you have your assignment, your discussion, your discussion, you're going to make sure that your first post is by Thursday night. Your first post contains, I would recommend, two to four paragraphs to answer all parts of the question. Has an APA formatted in-text citation and reference, and then two peer responses that are at least one paragraph in length. What we're looking at with this chapter is a little bit different. We're looking at the price system, rationing, allocating resources. How's that done? Price rationing is basically the process by which the market system allocates goods and services to consumers, and it tries to find where there's surpluses and shortages, which really adjust in the market. Now, in your book, you're going to be looking at a couple different instances that occur. You're going to look for where there's an instance where there's a surplus, and where there's a shortage. Where both of those examples exist, you have to evaluate what would be the appropriate adjustment with prices to help equate the market. So in the market for, in figure 4.1, in the market for wheat, if the price is always changing, that's going to cause a different change in both supply and demand in the allocation. Now, another thing you want to look at is when supply is strictly limited. When supply is limited, that's a totally different thing that we look at. You'll look at figure 4.2, you'll notice that there's not, there's only one quantity available. Given that there's only one quantity available, the limited supply is going to create a lot of instances where markets will have to adjust for that. On occasion, both governments, private firms, society use some mechanism other than the market system to ration any item for which there's an excess demand at the current price. If there's an excess demand, that means there is more demand than supply, and that means a shortage exists. If a shortage, shortage exists, it, based, it might mean that the price is too low. And when the price is too low, it's going to equate for the market to do something with prices to basically adjust for that. If you look at figure 4.3, in that figure, you're looking at what's called a price ceiling. A price ceiling is a maximum price that sellers may charge for good, and it's usually set by the government. When you look at a price ceiling, you look at many instances where the government has to get involved to make determinations. The government sets a maximum price, and the price can never be above that point. A good example of a price ceiling is rent control. Prices can never be above the rent control price. When the equilibrium price is above that point, government has to get involved to equate for that amount. Now, sometimes you see markets where there's classified as black markets, where the government can't regulate those particular instances. Black markets are very interesting in our economy. Black markets exist because governments can't regulate those markets and it causes a different allocation of resources. And no matter how good the intentions of private organizations and government, it's pretty difficult to prevent the price system from operating and to stop willingness to pay from exerting itself. Every time an alternative is tried, the price system seeks to sneak in that back door with favored customers, black markets, the final distribution may even be more unfair than what would result in simple price rationing. So there's always these different price mechanisms always occurring. Price changes and allocation of resources. Price changes resulting from shifts of demand and output markets cause profits to rise or fall. Profits attract capital. Losses lead to disinvestment. No one's going to want to invest in anything where they're not making money. 
higher wages attract labor, encourage worker to acquire skills. At the core of the system, supply, demand, and prices, and inputs and output, markets determine the allocation resources, basically the combination where buyers, sellers want to adjust in the market. So for this week, those were some of the topics that we're going to look at. So focus on those topics and try to estimate the role of the government in setting appropriate price floors, price ceilings in the market and how that adjusts for our actual economy.